Hi, I've been joined today by Neelam Ali, who's asked me to show her one of her favourite dishes. Hello, I'm Neelam Ali, and I'm going to join Mary um, to make my favourite smoked haddock fish cakes, which I haven't had since before my stoma surgery, which was over a year ago, and I really miss fish. The thing in my mind where I thought if I ate fish, it would cause bad odour or wind, so I cut it out of my diet totally. How long is it, is it since you've eaten fish? Over a year. Right, okay, and also you have a gluten-free diet, Yes. so fish cakes generally are off the menu for they're you. They're normally, unless they're homemade. Okay, so, well, we're going to show you some gluten-free fish cakes Can't then. wait. Okay, lovely. So we're going to start by, you've got some smoked haddock here. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice, flavourful fish. Okay. So we've got some milk just warm in the pan. We're going to poach the smoked haddock a little bit first. So uh, did you have any particular dietary issues before having the surgery? Uh, just my celiac gluten-free diet and okay. um, a few food allergies. And what issues did you find that you had once you'd had the surgery? Sore skin, leaks, and then I just avoided a lot of foods. Not just fish, it was more like vegetables, mushrooms, cauliflower, peas, sweet corn. And this is because you thought it, it would cause you problems yes. with, with blockages, etc. Yeah. Okay. And have you tried any products particularly? I think I've tried every single product on the market, okay. but the Trio came to my rescue when I um, found some information on the internet, so decided to ring them up and just ask for their advice and spoke to a really, really helpful representative, Zara, and um, sent her some pictures of my skin condition, mm -hmm. uh, which were totally broken down. And they very kindly sent me some products, including the silicon, silicon gel, and I found that very helpful. So this fish looks like it's about ready. It's just starting to flake apart. Don't see it too cooked because it's going to cook again in the pan. Okay. So just going to transfer these potatoes into here. They're already boiled. They are. So they've been cut, cut into cubes. So just taking the fork and crushing them up a little bit. They don't need to be perfectly smooth. We're not after mashed potatoes here. Um, they're nice floury potatoes. These are Mary's Piper. Okay. So they've got a nice light fluffy texture. So I'm just going to take the fish and lift it out of the milk. If there was any skin on there, you'd remove it at this stage. This is already skinned. We're also going to add some horseradish into here. Horseradish is really nice with smoked fish of any kind, smoked mackerel, smoked salmon, all sorts. And then we're going to use just a little bit of this egg. Mm -hmm. Most of the egg is to be used later but a little bit. That would help find it. It is, yeah, and as it cooks, as the fish cake cooks, it will help it settle a little bit as well. I'm just going to use the fork to bring it together. Not a nice, even mix of fish and potato, but equally, we don't want the fish to be completely broken up. We want some mm. nice big pieces in there. Mm. So I'm just gently turning it over, and we'll need some salt and pepper as well. Not too much salt because the smoked haddock's already mm -hmm. salted, so it's quite a salty thing. Just a couple of small pinches. A pinch of black pepper. So aside from fish, is there anything else that you've missed particularly that you've sort of felt that you, you shouldn't Salad eat? Salad stuff. Salad stuff. Sweet corn, peas, okay. mushrooms. Yeah. Okay, so that's the mix. Mm -hmm. um, we need to form this into cakes now and then we're going to put it in the fridge to set up for a bit before we wrap it in the breadcrumbs. Okay. Okay, so to form the fish cakes, they don't need to be perfect, it's not, not a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So you can just take handfuls and you can make them as big or as small as you like. I like them a little bit smaller because they're easier to handle in the pan. They're sort of less likely to fall apart. You can use a, a ring mould if you want to be very, um, very precise about it. Okay, so we'll put those away to cool down mm -hmm. and then wrap them in the breadcrumbs. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put together the dill mayonnaise that mm -hmm. we're going to have with the fish cakes. So it's just uh, very, very simply mayonnaise, chopped dill, some lemon juice. So can you tell me a little bit more about the reasons why you gave up all those foods, the fish that you've not had for a while, the salad, the fruit, etc.? Um, because in the beginning, before I had my stoma surgery, I had um, a consultation with the stoma nurse and they basically drilled into me, you must not have anything with a skin on, like fresh fruit, jacket potatoes, um, you're not allowed sweet corn, peas, things that you know, would normally break down a bit further down mm -hmm. the gut. 
Um, so they scared me so much that I just totally restricted them, cut so them out of my diet totally. You became frightened of trying new things yeah. or, or trying the things that you used to enjoy? I used to eat everything before, right, okay. apart from my odd allergies. So what would you say to somebody who'd recently had surgery and was perhaps frightened of trying foods that they used to enjoy? I would say please don't do what I did and make the mistake of cutting it totally out of their diet. I would say just try small amounts, mm -hmm. just try small pieces, yeah. small amounts, just see what the reaction is, how your body copes with digesting it. Cook the food down a bit more right. so it's not half raw, you know, not steamed vegetables, maybe something that's boiled down a bit more, it might be easier to digest. Okay, so all things are an option, just in small amounts. Yes, or moder in moderation. Okay, lovely. So we've had these in the fridge for a little bit. They've firmed up nicely. So we're going to panne them, which just means wrapping breadcrumbs. The gluten-free flour, some egg, and gluten-free breadcrumbs. Uh, I've made these from a loaf of gluten-free bread. Okay. Just chop off the crusts yeah. into the food processor. Just whiz for it, um, 30 seconds to a minute. Into the flour. It's quite messy this bit. Mm. Okay, so into the flour first. Into the flour first. Pat off the excess. Mm -hmm. Into the egg. Just turn it over in the egg. And into the breadcrumbs. And then you can just pat the egg and breadcrumbs down a little bit. Okay. There we go. So next up, we'll get some oil into the pan. And then a little bit of butter as well. Once the butter's melted, we can go into the fish cakes. So just have to remove the fish slice. And they'll take about three or four minutes on each side. So just turn them over. Mm -hmm. wow. Press them down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now you said you haven't had salad for some time. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try a little bit of mm -hmm. salad. So those drain off on the paper a little bit to remove any excess fat. We don't want too much fat on there. And then we've got some salad leaves. Just pick a few out. Let's put some of this dill mayonnaise on the plates. A bit of salad. So here you are. These are your gluten-free smoked haddock fish cakes with dill mayonnaise and salad. Absolutely. Melt in the mouth. Gorgeous. Good. I'm really looking forward to the days ahead now with a new varied diet. Not cutting out or restricting things, just yeah, trying, great, trying yeah. them. Thank you very much. Oh, pleasure, absolutely. Oh my God, got up a bit more. <laughs>